Hello everyone, uh, this is Ahmed Saleh again. I'm here today to show you exactly how we migrate data from Excel workbooks um, to Dataverse in Power Platform. This is one of these scenarios actually in my first projects, uh, one of these requirements was the data are scattered in multiple Excel sheets and uh, we needed to move this data into Dataverse and uh, we were going to use uh, this data in Dataverse with two, type of, uh, two types of apps, uh, model-driven apps and Canvas apps. Um, the data records were quite big. I, I, I had some Excel sheets that has more than uh, 30 to 50,000 records on, this, uh, on those Excel sheets. So we had to move those to Dataverse and um, initially was, uh, you know, uh, figuring out which uh, which way is the best way to really uh, load this data and here i'm just uh, showing you uh, the best way that I, I found out you know to really do this uh, without any issues uh, that you can face uh, in the migration uh, this is our excel sheet here so uh, this is just a scenario like it's imaginary scenario so i have this cupcake store online store uh, i would imagine these are the customers that they have currently uh, so this is the table for the customers. Um, you know, we have the column user ID, we have the full name, email address, and a street address uh, for the customers. Uh, the other sheet, the other data sheet that we have, we have the orders. So uh, in the orders, we have the order number, uh, we have the date of the order, we have the total price. And the total price, it's, um, it's being calculated as, you know, using some of and, and, and VLOOKUP functions in Excel. Uh, to get the unit or the item price uh, and then each order might have multiple items maybe multiple flavors in the cupcakes each one has different price it's 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 a very uh, straightforward calculation from the other order item sheet uh, that we have in this uh, workbook and then uh, we have the uh, customer ID which is basically kind of like a, a you know a foreign key in this uh, table uh, the last table that we have is is the item uh, or the items uh, the order items so as I said you know the order can be uh, you know uh, combined of, of two different items uh, here for example chocolate and banana each one has different price and that's why we calculated the full cost of this order is to be here like you know uh, ten dollar point uh, five cents uh, very, very simple, not big data, as you can see. It's just, you know, to really show you the concept. I have more information about this data in the blog where you're going to have this video. Uh, from here, we're going to go, uh, let's just go quickly to the Dataverse so, uh, or, or to the uh, Power Platform. So, um, as usual, best practice is actually to create a solution. And here I have created a solution. I call it Demos. In that solution, I created my table. So, what I'm doing here is basically I create the tables in the uh, Dataverse first. Uh, and then after that, I use the data flows to load the data into these tables. And I found it actually the, 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 the most easiest way, efficient way uh, to really reduce the amount of maybe issues or errors that you might face when you do that. Again, this is a development or a developer plan. And remember, one of the downside of the developer plan is the performance and the speed. So bear with me here because of you know sometimes it will be slow to really uh, populate things uh, but we're going to start with i'm going to just show you like the schema of these tables that i have created it's basically it will be kind of like identical to these three sheets that i have in the excel workbook so i have here uh, in the tables i have the customer table i have the order items and i have the orders table uh, the customers uh, here I will go to the customer table and we will check out the columns that we have go to the columns you have obviously the system columns that you know will be generated by every time that you generate to create a table in Dataverse uh, one thing actually in this new table designer in, in, in Dataverse, uh, it used to be that you can actually filter by the custom columns. That means the columns that you have created in the custom table. 
uh, now we don't have this functionality anymore i usually just filter by the prefix name so that's why that's one of the nicest thing that when you actually create your tables inside a solution that you created you can designate a prefix name you know to really be before any objects you create inside that solution this is a very good practice to really uh, you know, organize your objects and, and things within within one solution, one container. So I will just put like, you know, demo here and I that will actually go ahead and filter for me uh, these tables. So these are the tables that I have created, the custom tables. So I have that, you know, custom full name in the primary name column. I have the customer ID. I have, this is the unique identifier. This is the good, basically, uh, column to hold the uh, you know the unique identification for each record that we have here this is not custom this is just a system column but it's the only system column that will be generated with the prefix that you have in this solution the email address and the state and everything so here we don't have a lookup column obviously because this is a parent table so this is the you know the one side of a relationship that we have between this table and the other table which is the orders so we don't have a lookup column here. The lookup column will be actually in the order. So we're going to go to the orders uh, table here. And then we will go to the columns. We do the same thing. I like to filter just to see the only custom columns that I'm looking for. Uh, just to make the video short, again, uh, how we created these, you know, uh, columns and everything. You know, it's, it's very straightforward. Again, you just generate, create a new columns and... You know, I, 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 I make sure that uh, these columns have the same data type uh, that I have in Excel. Filter by, you know, write demo. And then I have my custom tables here. And this is here, uh, you know, the, the columns that I have in order. So this is the lookup column. So that's, that's the lookup column. This is the column that is going to hold the value of uh, the good uh, number or the good record actually good value from the customer table again the lookup uh, this is why I, I think this is the easiest way to do this because you are migrating data that it's already in the lookup column and you want to actually have this moved into dataverse so when once you start filling the lookup column in this order you need actually this value to go and look into the parent which is the customer and find the value and bring it there so that's why it's very important that you actually load the data into the parent column, parent table first. So in this case, the customer is the parent table. So that's where we're going to start loading this data using the data flow. And then we have the rest of these other columns that here. And uh, the same thing for the order items. It's going to be the same thing. We have a lookup column in the order items that it's looking into uh, the orders uh, and uh, both of these uh, lookup columns are one to many relationships so in orders the lookup column is one to many uh, so the one is the customer and the many is the orders and in the order items it's also one to many the one is going to be the orders and the many is going to be the order items uh, now let's go to the customer and, and start actually loading the data as you can see that i don't have any data here so I'm going to start, you know, this with you. Uh, sometimes, again, you know, take times for, for the data to be loaded uh, and depend on the data size. So to do this, uh, you go to import, and here you're going to do import data. Again, some people like to do the import data from Excel. I really like to do the import data through the data flows because I can schedule, uh, you know, uh, refresh time, especially if you are in, you know, in development phase and you're going to just use this data uh, regularly in your development and testing and user accepting testing you can actually have these uh, refresh schedules and all these things uh, also uh, uh, you know I found out like usually data flows will give you a clear error if it failed uh, you know to uh, upload the data uh, or to load the data to Dataverse so we're gonna start by import data here and you will open uh, open us for us you know the basically the first screen that you can select the location uh, uh, or the source, I mean, of your data source. In our case, it's basically going to be the, fi the Excel files or the Excel workbook. Here, you're going to select, you know, the uh, location. If you have these files already in, you know, a SharePoint list uh, or a SharePoint site or OneDrive, you can actually go and browse the OneDrive. 
if you don't so I'm gonna just select this and upload the file and I'm gonna do only this the first time I do this with this Excel sheet because after that it will be actually uploaded in my data in my OneDrive so it's this one here select and then it will be right here so now it's already been uploaded to my OneDrive so next time when I'm gonna go and do the orders and the order items I don't have to really select this option which is upload file I will actually select link to file and browse to the OneDrive folder where I have this file uploaded to click next um, that will actually open this workbook Excel workbook you will select which table you are uh, you know you can obviously do multiple tables at a time that's in case you are doing some kind of transformations between two tables to have one result in one table in dataverse so i'm gonna go ahead and, and select customer one. Oh, yeah so this is basically what i have i check out the data just make sure everything seems fine you know i have the user id i have my columns you know everything here look like you know it's 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 fine nothing else uh, you know it's all in you know numbers it's user ids numbers full name is text email is text speech is text everything else text there's a postal code or zip code is text everything looks fine here go next here we have the power query so here where you actually can do like you know add columns if you want to add calculated columns do any kind of transformations for your data or all other functionality Power Query provide for you to prepare the data actually to go to Dataverse. So this is a good place to really prep your data if you need any kind of extra work. Like in some cases, I actually like to add index columns. So basically, just to add a calculated column somehow here to just you know show me the number of the records. Or if you have like you know first last name and then middle initial, and you want to actually have one column to have the full name, you can also do this here and just map that new column that you will create in the power query to an existing column in the new table in your dataverse hit next and as we said here it's going to be an existing table that we are loading the data into so here the destination table is going to be our customers so scroll down again you will have uh, the demo remember the demo thing you know so you have the prefix so I have the prefix that's you know just to find my table so my, my prefix is demo and this is my table here customers and then this is my um, alternate key this is a very important step you have to have in every parent table you have to have an alternate key and the reason for that is we'll actually point this out when we come to load the data into the orders table which is a child table of this call of, of this table here that the customers here we're gonna go ahead and select these basically the source so this is this is the columns in Excel sheet all right so I'm gonna select the city I'm here gonna select the full name select the uh, ID of the user user ID uh, email address I have the postal code here and then I have the state and i have the street address that's it again we don't have to do anything here more i mean i don't need to delete because this is just one time migration so i don't have to run this again so i don't worry about deleting existing rows this is if we decided in the future to use this uh, data flow to just keep continuously running the data from excel to here while we are in development then you actually maybe select these so that's mean if you want to select this so that means if there is any rows that were deleted from the source which is excel they will not be added to this uh so they basically will be deleted you know from the data source from the dataverse we are not doing this at this time you can try the auto uh, auto map uh you know it's 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 not that big of you know uh, number of columns so i just do it myself but you know if you have like two many you know you can just you know try the auto map and then go through and make sure that they are correct here you're going to click next and then uh, it will start actually asking you if you want to refresh manually or if you want to uh, refresh automatically so basically if, if you want to like here for example frequency of the refresh that's when we're talking about schedule a refresh like every 24 hours or whatever time that you would like here we're going to just select refresh manually i will say send refresh failure notification to the data flow on owner and then i will click publish so that will actually work in the back end now and start actually 
running the flow. I'm going to show you exactly how to go to this. One thing that you have to understand that you cannot, at, until now, you cannot edit the data flows inside the solution. So if I want to edit any of these data flows, I have to go to my Dataverse here in the uh, left panel. And then under the Dataverse, you have your data flows. And then you can here actually go ahead and edit that data flow if you need. So I have uh, this one here. It's actually already being published, as you can see. I like to rename them. So after it's actually finished, I can go ahead and rename this data flow. Uh, it's being published successfully, so I don't have any error uh, in my schema or in Power Query or anything. So that's great. Uh, you know, then it's going to actually refresh. It's actually in progress. I was going to go ahead. Maybe you think that I, I should just go ahead and start, you know, doing the same thing for uh, the orders uh, table. But remember that I am relying on the data on this table, uh, which is the customers to load the customer uh, to load the orders lookup. Uh, column values in the orders. So here, very quick, you know, it's, it's done. Now, if I go back to my solution um, and then go to the demo solution and we're going to go and open the customer table and we'll see uh, that it's there just to make sure that the data is, has been loaded. All uh, right. So here, go to tables. just duplicate this so next time when we are back to the dataverse I thought so go to the customers second here it's right here so now we have the data already loaded to our table in the dataverse now we're going to go ahead to the order tables and we're going to do the same basically thing but this time remember that we already loaded that excel sheet to one drive when we first actually use the data flow so this time basically we're going to go to import import data second here again this is a developer plan so you know you don't expect that much performance here so it's pretty slow I guess sometimes go ahead and select Excel and then from here I'm gonna link to the file so I'm gonna browse to my OneDrive And then I'm gonna do here, uh, it's, uh, let's see, recents. No, it's actually not recents, my file, apps, Microsoft Power Query, uploaded files. This is where it usually goes, and that's right here. So this is usually the location of the uploaded files that you upload through the Power Query when you're creating the data flow. So select, good, and then you go to next. Right here, we're gonna go ahead, select orders. Again, it's the same thing. We have the order numbers, date, we have total price, customer ID. Just hit next. I don't have to do any kind of transformations for this scenario again. Feel free to do whatever you want to really transform your data and prepare your data if you want any kind of preparation before you import the data into Dataverse tables. 
wait until populate the data front of me here in the power query and then I will hit next after that if there is any error if there is any issues with your tables you know again one of the best practices in your Excel source try to not have space you know that's that's a good practice I know that I haven't done this in this example but try to you know eliminate any space especially trailing and uh, tailing spaces in the column names in Excel that might actually cause an error uh, when this uh, data flow run hit next so it's it's great practice do not have tailing spaces do not have trail space in your column names here I'm gonna go ahead and load the existing table and I'm gonna go and select demo um, orders table right here now here remember that we're talking about the foreign key here this is what we have important uh, the important part here so this is basically uh, the, the destination column name of the orders uh, again the orders uh, has a, a, an alternate key and the reason for that because this is this table the orders table is a parent of the order items table that's why I have to put an alternate key here but here we have this column which is actually this is the lookup column so if I go this is the source so this is the order number so this column here is the lookup column looking up into customers what you see here this is actually the relationship name I mean when you generate when you create a lookup column in Dataverse it will actually automatically generate a relationship for you so this is actually the relationship name and you can see that the relationship has picked one side of this relationship name is actually the customer ID orders which is exactly the system name of the lookup column in the orders table the other part of the relationship is actually the customer ID which is the alternate key column in the a customer table if you are not if you don't create actual alternative you will not see this relationship and when you import the data will have actually an error for that it will not import anything so that's why it's very important to have these alternate key on the parent columns in sorry in the parent tables the order date here is the order date that we have we have the order numbers and sorry this is the demo order number yes uh, Oh, sorry, that's one here that's not the order number. So this is the customer ID, sorry that. So this is the customer ID, you know, it's linked to the lookup column as the customer ID, and then I have the order number here, and then I have the total price here. Nothing else, we'll hit next. And then send in your fresh failure to my email, and I hit publish, and here you go, it's gone. You know, while this actually loading, before we're going to go there, we're going to obviously make sure, but we can actually go ahead and start in the order items, you know, until until that work. But, you know, if I go there, uh, it will actually, once that open, we're probably going to go back again and check the flow and see what it's doing. So here I'm going to go ahead and start import data. This is the last table I have. It's the order items. So I'm going to go ahead and start importing the data. Uh, let me go check here real quick i'm gonna go back go to dataverse click on dataverse click on data flow and and see if uh, that is finished here maybe we can go there back again it's just you know sometimes you have to be multitasking i'm trying to make my videos very short just to the point of these issues that you might experience uh, sometimes uh, again this is one of these things that I mean to be honest it took me a while to really figure out the best practice in this um, and I found it you know uh, the easiest way the cleanest way that you know really uh, to, to uh, you know uh, move data from one source uh, to Dataverse from any source to Dataverse I'm using this not only with Excel I have used this actually with SQL as well uh, on-prem SQL and Azure SQL to move data from there to my Dataverse and again it worked great for me uh, here we have uh, so let's say the last publish I sort okay so both of them actually succeeded so this is the most recent one for the order item so I'm gonna go ahead actually and and now select Excel sheet and then go ahead and again it's gonna be browse the OneDrive go to my location where I initially uploaded that file in my first uh, uh, you know, uh, data load to the Dataverse table customers. Apps and 
power query again you can have the file anywhere in your computer you just have to bring the link in and and, and point the link uh, you know on the browse there uh, and you know uh, it will work just fine so select this one here and then go ahead and this time we're gonna select the last table remember that this is gonna be a series of uh, blocks so in this first box I'm just showing you how to move the data from Excel to Dataverse after this we're gonna build a very simple canvas app to start actually entering data into these tables and uh, manipulating the data so basically entering the data uh, I need this actually this one here it has that, that's the old one so order items so again for the order items uh, where is the order items here this is not one I have one uh, yeah this one actually that's the one yes oops yeah yeah this one should have let's see okay I'm gonna hit next I have in this one actually an additional column, which is uh, basically it's it's a kind of a primary column that I created on this uh, sheet to have the item ID. Uh, it's something that we can create here by actually creating an index column uh, if we need to, you know, uh, create a, you know a unique ID. Um, for this so for example here I don't I don't see that column and I know that it was there uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create another column and it's an opportunity for you to see how I'm gonna create this index column so I basically want to create a primary key uh, for this and um, you know to link it uh, to just have a primary key for this record uh, for this uh, table a primary key column so I'm gonna use an index column so I'm gonna go ahead select this one so we'll start from one so it will create uh, you know an index column for me there you go we have this column that was created perfect and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit next one thing I want to actually just make sure that I can see the data see again you know um, uh, guide like double check things multiple times just to make sure that you know it's easy to find any mistakes that in the beginning of your deployment or you know migration um, before things you know uh, become very complicated so you have everything in place uh, let's go ahead and map these columns here so again we are doing the same thing we have the table already we are loading to existing table I'm gonna go ahead and select my table go back to my demo prefix and select order items once you select the order items again it will populate the source columns the destination columns so these are my destination columns here I have the item flavor I have the item ID which is gonna be the index in this case that the column I generated and then I have the item price and here you have this lookup column again so if I did not have an alternate key in the orders table the orders table, which is apparent for this table the order items this will not actually bring this relationship name so again that's very important concept that you have to follow here I'm gonna go ahead and select the order number and hit next and then send refresh failure notifications to the data flow nothing else and it will here you go it's gone so here if I'm gonna go and just check this one let's see if we can actually or you know what maybe we are here so let's just go ahead and hit orders and see if the data actually came to the orders table already it's slower than usual to be honest today so I don't know what's going on but here here we go we have actually the data right here so I'm gonna just go ahead and edit this in a new tab I want to show something and meanwhile I'm gonna go ahead and select this order item so actually uh, we can refresh then and and see if uh, we can see the data but yeah it's definitely slower than normal um, maybe one of the kids actually playing on some online games or something 
that's a possibility here. All right, let's see here. Uh, still opening. Yeah, that's still opening here. Yeah, so this is the order. So this is, yeah, this is my orders uh, already being imported from Excel. Uh, again, I like to cross check usually everything. So that's, that's a good practice. You open the Excel sheet, you know, side to side to this and just make sure that everything is fine. As you can see here, the lookup column is already generated. Uh, remember, you know, my Excel sheet in the order, that's, you know, that's just to remind you that my orders uh, table, I didn't have the customer names here, right? I have the customer names in the customer table, right? In the customer sheet. But here in Excel sheet, because you know the lookup, you have the lookup, you know, bringing the, the uh, customer name. And the reason for that is, so this lookup has, as I said, the good value of that record in the customer table. The customer table has the default name table. The default name table value is the one that will pop up here, right? So the default name values in that customer table is actually the full name, right? So that's why it's popping here. So let's go ahead and like, you know, if I want to just, for example, you know, add, change this, for example, let's just delete this here. So if I'm actually looking up and I'm looking for names, you know, let's say it will actually pop us. This is just basically looking up for these names. So that populating these names for you, right? So that's, that's great. Again, what is the value here? It's actually, if you export this file now to Excel, you will find two columns. One column has the good, like this customer ID underscore order or score orders. It will have the good value of the record in the customer table, but it will also export another column with the relationship name that has actually the actual value, which is going to be what? It's going to be the customer, the, the employee, uh, or the, sorry, the, it's going to be the user ID. And we can actually, you know, try that exactly. I think that was idea. So just, yeah, hopefully it's not. Yeah, perfect. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, okay. It's saved right here. I'm going to just make sure that my last table has data, as I said. So I'm going to go there and see if we have any data yet. Let's just let me hit refresh here and see. Okay. I don't see any data yet, so. I see actually it's populating right here so these are the order items and again as I said you know it's it's gonna be the same thing like the orders so it's pointing actually the order items or the order numbers in the lookup column uh, let's go back to the orders where actually I told you I'm gonna export this to Excel and show you exactly this concept again the, the main reason for me to make this video is actually the issue of the lookup columns and how to load to load the values of the lookup columns into the lookup columns into Dataverse. If I'm gonna go ahead here and let's just go ahead and export this file to uh, Dataverse file to Excel sheet. And I'm gonna show exactly what I mean uh, happened there. So I have here, this is actually the order items. Let's just also open this so we can check this later. See the orders items here. I don't need this anymore. And I'm exporting this, still exporting. It has been exported right here. Let's just click download exported data. And I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Once I see it, okay, let's go hit. Okay, open file. Hurry up. Okay, 
that's the one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit open. And it could be also my PC. I look like I think I need to do some kind of. I'm gonna go ahead really quick and just format this as a table so we can just uh, see everything clearly. Right here, I like to do that. Uh, so right, uh, so I might have headers. Okay. So remember that I told you that uh, actually the customer, uh, the the lookup column, which is in this case is gonna be uh, where is it? I have it here. That's the one. Do you see this one here? So this is this is another column actually has, as you can see, it has actually it doesn't have the customer name, but it does have the customer ID, and this is exactly what we're looking for. This is exactly what seems similar to the Excel before the migrations. But in Dataverse, what it does, it will actually go look up the value number one in the customer table and return to you the default name column value, which at that time is gonna be the full name of the customer. So this is exactly what I told you that you will see in this as Excel sheet. So that's awesome. Other, other columns, as you can see, these are all actually system columns. So with this, actually, we conclude that we already have everything that we need. Uh, uh, we have imported the three tables. So the summary of this, create the schema of these tables into Dataverse first. Make sure that you have your relationship and lookup columns set up right. And then after that, start loading the data into the parent table, then the child. And that's it has to be uh, in, in, in order so you can have all the data. One last thing we said we're going to check uh, the order items. Remember here, see, this is their order item. Like, for example, it's looking up uh, the order number, right? So we, the looking up, actually, the lookup column is the order number. So this is the lookup column here. So that's the lookup column is looking up the order number. And once we build the Canvas app, I'm going to show you exactly how to view data. For example, the customer, which orders they have, and which items of each order that they have uh included in that order right so our next video is going to be in our next blog which is building a very simple canvas app how to work with dataverse sometimes you know the formula is different the, the way that we handle the lookup and the relationships in dataverse uh to show data in our galleries uh or in our uh, edit forms in in canvas app is a little bit different uh when you are using uh dataverse but again, this is a great start. Hopefully, uh, you know, that will clear up a lot of, you know, uh, question that you have about moving data from Excel uh, to Dataverse. Again, I use the same methodology to move data from SQL uh, on-prem or SQL Adder to Dataverse. I have some flows or data flows actually refresh every 24 hours to update the data uh, frequently. Uh, so this is, you know, uh, the best way to do it uh, in my experience, uh, and I hope you uh, find it uh, beneficial, um, and I will see you in the uh, next, uh, next video uh, talking about the Canvas app using this data uh, from Dataverse. See you later.